When I think about renewable energy in Minnesota, I think about tremendous potential. A lot of people's first thought is sustainability. And that's important, but this is something that makes financial sense. I think we've come far enough that we can see how it will work. We saw the birth of a new industry. We know it's a really important driver of a new economy. It provides jobs in Minnesota. It gives us more control over our energy. It brings us together. It helps us connect with our neighbors. Minnesota has really positioned itself very well to continue to lead in the renewable energy space. We've got the best chance to show that it can work and will work. This originally was a, a large dairy farm. We produce European cheeses. We wanted to diversify a little more. So I started raising the, the American bison. And our new addition is a solar garden. So we're producing electricity uh, for the community and uh, to sell to the grid. So this solar garden is uh, approximately 22 acres and it produces enough power to uh, power about 1,000 homes. It makes a lot of sense for me that I know this 22 acres is going to make me a profit and it's also producing a lot of electricity and helping out the community. That's an ideal situation that uh, at my age, as, as I slow down, this thing's gonna keep working for me and help out uh, my family and the community. So really we can think about this as almost the next big crop. Uh, what you see here is solar power that will be harvested over the next 30 years. Farmers have always been caretakers of the land and of our communities. You know, that's traditionally been through food and energy might be another way that they can provide that really important support to the greater community. I've always been in favor of any renewable energy, whether it's wind or solar, but we don't have a steady wind here. Once in a while we have a tornado, but we don't have a steady wind. So I think solar is really the answer. We were offered this opportunity to put solar on our land and we decided to do it would be beneficial to everyone. Well, it'd be a good revenue for the county, Chisago County, the North Branch School District, and it would help a lot of improvements, plus cleaner air for our future, our grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Well, when I bought the farm, I said, I told her, someday <laughs> we'll retire off of this land. <laughs> and that's what, that's what we can do now. This area, in many ways, is being returned to more of a native prairie. Uh, even though we have solar panels, uh, we were able to work with the company to promote uh, pollinator-friendly and bee-friendly uh, planting. I've noticed a lot more wildlife already with the solar panels and you know, the, the monarch butterflies are back. back. Uh, we really have seen almost a restoration of the ecological benefits of the native prairie out here. So not only is the solar directly beneficial, but I think how we use the land and how our stewardship manages that land will have an impact as well. I think it's cool that uh, we're producing clean electricity and right here, that we're doing something good for the community and the, the whole country, right? <laughs> or maybe the world. <laughs> for the potential to be a demonstration area of how solar can be built into a community, can thrive in a rural environment. Seems like a win-win situation to me. Solar has had a huge impact throughout Minnesota, but wind has a particularly important role to play in southern and southwestern Minnesota. 
Farming today has been challenging. This is, you know, kind of a blessing. It, you know, the wind turbines are been our saving grace. My great grandpa moved up here in the very before the early depression, 1920s. So, so we've been here for over oh, working on 100 years probably, and set of roots here. And I am fifth generation farmer here. There's uptakes and downturns in, in business and, and with new challenges, you, you know, every day you adapt and, and have to correct with the market and, and be flexible. And these wind turbines are a great example of that to try and keep as many dollars coming into the farm as you can, you know. So with the farms that we own and rent, I think we are currently farming around 18 turbines. I feel that being out here in rural America, we only have certain avenues to have income coming in. You keep farm income coming in, you know. Um, this is one of them. Before this all came about, in uh, probably October, November in 2000, I said to Eddie one day, you know, it'd sure be nice to have our windmill back. Like in the pasture, you know, we had an old windmill in the yard, we took it down. Yeah, yeah, he goes like that. Well, a couple weeks later, he came home and said, how would you like to have a couple wind towers? And well, that's where this kind of all started. And <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, they're wonderful. We try to work with the farmers. They're happy to get the wind farms in here, get the, get the turbines on their land. That's really where the benefit comes from. I, I think it's gonna continue to grow. Every outfit out is right now hiring like crazy. I think wind energy is the number one, or the leading employer right now. Guys, we're going to start here today. Just make sure as you're climbing, you can inspect the tower as you climb. Jack, you'll be the first one up. The demand for um, wind energy technicians are quite big. We can't get enough students in for the job prospects out there. Chances are for them to climb a ladder to get to a top pay scale will be in a short time. I love being on the tower. It's, uh, it's like a whole new world up there. Like you can literally see everything. So it's great. We all love it up there. It's good for everybody, not just state of Minnesota, but uh, you know, it's clean energy. And it's the future of energy, I believe. There's a lot of opportunity in it, and it's a lot of fun. The reason why I was so excited to work in this field was because it made me feel like I'm going to accomplish more than what I can even imagine helping reach the 25% renewable energy goal of state of Minnesota. Minnesota West does offer a uh, wind uh, energy program, what's a one or two year degree. What we need to do is, is make sure that these students understand that there are a lot of options for them once they leave here. There's a report out there that the wind technician um, positions are among the fastest growing jobs in the United States. We here in Minnesota are seeing Wind towers going down the highways like crazy because there is so much new wind being installed in Minnesota and in South Dakota that are part of our, our Minnesota production companies. The economics of building it now has gotten to be so much more competitive. And that's why you see, for instance, XL uh, investing in billions of dollars putting up new wind. That innovation, that excitement that's happening in renewable energy is, is pretty important to our economy. Over the last five years, renewable energy has added over 2,000 jobs. It's about two times that of other industries in Minnesota. Solar power now uh, employs 10 times more workers than the coal industry in the United States. So this is no longer a boutique industry, this is core. Most of the community solar gardens that I have been building in the last three years are on the ground and they're out in cornfields in sort of a ring around the Twin Cities. And so what this represents is a move into the core central city. And so a lot of people are gonna be seeing it and hearing about it one way or another. And being able to introduce that to those of us here in North Minneapolis that all too often don't get a chance to hear it uh, or understand how it impacts them uh, has been great. What first drew me to solar energy was a friend of mine who actually uh, asked for a little bit of help on a project uh, for a three-week scope. The Tron's role is in taking the responsibility as the crew leader 
to build the systems. People can visualize employment. They can envision ways of being involved. This is a very viable a career that you can get into. It's not going to fall through no time soon. And we're putting 25,000 jobs to the grid. So maybe, hopefully, we can get a chunk of that for those who are struggling with finding jobs, struggling with trying to find a career. It's a big market, and I would like to see a lot more diversity in the market as well. The job growth is created, obviously, when there's construction activity, but then you see the continuing benefits. So in this case, we see the jobs that are created of people out here working and maintaining the solar projects. So you see a spin-off or an economic benefit that just creates a vitality that hasn't been here. The growth of renewables has been a, a big deal for us here in Duluth. It's meant jobs here at the port in terms of crane operators, uh, riggers and cargo handlers that have been involved in operating the equipment to unload vessels, load out trucks, or vice versa. It's been a lot of new jobs for uh, truckers, for tradesmen and women, for manufacturers and others. It's new opportunities. ATS started transporting wind uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, really at that time we saw the birth of a, a new industry and we saw an industry that was poised to grow very rapidly. So we made some strategic investments into equipment and that helped to position us to become the market leader in wind. We transport uh, about one out of every three uh, wind loads in the U.S. Since we started in wind in 2003, we've transported over 190,000 components. Year over year, the industry just keeps growing. It's also a way for the trucking industry to get involved in more of a green aspect of the world. We, you know, are not typically a green type uh, industry, so this is our way to give back. There's a lot of local companies in Minnesota, like Blattner, who have all invested into the wind industry, and they're creating jobs in Minnesota. Blattner is a, you know, a renewable energy company working in wind and solar and power delivery. Here in Avon, Blattner has about 200 employees on a full-time basis. 99% of our growth has been due to the renewable industry demands. So I've been a part of a lot of different communities when I've traveled throughout the country and, and as well as here in Minnesota, um, and I've seen the benefits. There's ongoing revenues from taxes for landowners and for states and counties that are really, really important, especially in rural parts of our state where a lot of these projects are built. They're really, really, those revenues are important to the county and to the cities. When solar power is produced, they actually pay a solar production credit. That becomes essentially like a, a tax benefit to the county, to the city, to the school district, and also to our townships. In our case, uh, we're looking at probably about $250,000 a year in property tax relief that comes to us because of our solar activity. So in a four-year uh, period, Sago County will be getting a million dollars from this, which will help all the taxpayers out. That means we can uh, lower property taxes or we can use that to do the roads, to build better parks, and to uh, provide the services that we normally do. Yeah, so this farm right now will uh, generate about $950,000 in tax revenue for Mauer County and the local townships that we're in. Even as you drive down I-90, you can see that they're redoing bridges, uh, re repaving roads. A lot of the county and township roads are getting redone too. New community centers for communities, small communities that can't afford it otherwise. New computers for all of the school systems that I've seen directly installed in the schools. Uh, new fire trucks for communities and some of the larger projects. It's, it's meant a, uh, meant a significant amount to us here in terms of the economic development in our region. The recent growth of renewable energy in Minnesota sort of shows itself in a lot of different ways. In addition to impacting our economy, you have that investment in the environment. And so being able to think about how we do things in a more healthier way, in a more sustainable way, that has driven a number of um, opportunities in the state.
There's this idea in Anishinaabe culture of always thinking in terms of seven generations ahead and taking care of them even though you might not meet them. That's an operating philosophy of why we're trying to make all these changes more towards sustainability because we want to make sure that the resources that we have now are still available to our future generations. Duluth is indigenous land. This is our traditional homeland. And this area has a lot of spiritual significance to our people. And I think um, the whole emphasis on our traditional values, it, it's a natural fit to talk about sustainable energy. So the American Indian Community Housing Organization is an umbrella of different services that are provided to the community. We do housing, uh, we do supportive services, and then we also have a lot of programming that happens here at Gamaji and the Paulus Cultural Center. Take a little of this, a little of that, get a jar over there, and put it in a sunny window. We've really been incorporating more sustainable practices, and so it's just another one of those things that makes you think a little bit about, well, where are we getting our energy from? Plants need water, right? They need water. They need nutrients that are in the soil, but then they need sun, energy, right? And we can use it to make electricity, which is what's happening on the roof right here. Minnesota Interfaith Power and Light is an organization that exists to bring the faith voice into climate change and also to bring climate change action to faith communities. This looked like a fantastic site to show that intersectionality of helping your community, helping the environment. The solar panel itself has opened this space for us to start thinking about other things as well and about what else is possible, what else can we do. Minnesota has a lot of potential. Renewable energy is going to continue to grow. We know that, it's, it is the future. It's something that I can say without any reservation that I'm something I'm proud to be a part of. So I mean, I think that most people that participate in no matter it's for the landowner, whether it's a developer or a utility. I think it, deep down everybody can say that they're proud to be a part of something that they know is good for everyone. I want to make sure everyone knows that there is a place for you in this work. This isn't just something for a few people who have engineering degrees or a few people who have thousands of dollars sitting around to do this. This is something that you can be a part of. This is, this is something for everybody.